Welcome to Living Life. Hey, when you read the book of Leviticus, and I mean the book of Leviticus, you know that book that has all the laws and the rules and the regulations in it? How do you feel when you read that? Is, does it come off boring to you? Or does it come or does it come off exciting to you? Which one is it? Probably you're gonna say it's a little boring with all those rules and regulations. But let me tell you how I see Leviticus. I'm very excited about this book. Leviticus actually gives us an expression of God's will uh, for himself, but also for us, his people. But it also shows the practical side of God, the very personal side of God, being involved in the lives of the Israelites and also being involved in our lives, our lives as well. In, the, in the, that time, God was involved in the lives of the Israelites with respect to their hygiene, uh, public health issues. So when God was with his people, he was really with his people on a practical basis. So it shows me a lot of different things about the side of, of God that we normally would not consider. So let's take a look at the passage and see how we can identify God more, even more so in this book. Leviticus chapter 14, verses 1 through 20. The Lord said to Moses, These are the regulations for any diseased person at the time of their ceremonial cleansing when they are brought to the priest. The priest is to go outside the camp and examine them. If they have been healed of their defiling skin disease, the priest shall order that two live clean birds and some cedar wood, scarlet yarn, and hyssop be brought for the person to be cleansed. Then the priest shall order that one of the birds be killed over fresh water in a clay pot. He is then to take the live bird and dip it, together with the cedar wood, the scarlet yarn, and the hyssop, into the blood of the bird that was killed over the fresh water. Seven times he shall sprinkle the one to be cleansed of the defiling disease, and then pronounce them clean. After that, he is to release the live bird in the open fields. The person to be cleansed must wash their clothes, shave off all their hair, and bathe with water. Then they will be ceremonially clean. After this, they may come into the camp, but they must stay outside their tent for seven days. On the seventh day, they must shave off all their hair. They must shave their head, their beard, their eyebrows, and the rest of their hair. They must wash their clothes and bathe themselves with water, and they will be clean. Welcome back to Living Life. We talked about a little bit earlier about God showing himself to be very practical and personal in this book. But one of the other things about this book of Leviticus, in particular chapter 14, which we're gonna, we're gonna be talking about, which uh, is the regulations for someone who is cleansed of leprosy, is God is pointing us to Jesus. We can see, if we look close enough at the clues, we can actually see the foreshadowing of Jesus Christ, who would come later to be our perfect, once for all, substitute for sin. So in the beginning of this, uh, this particular chapter, uh, we see a lepers, in leprous condition, which is, uh, needs cleansing. Uh, so when we look at the cleansing piece, of it, it brings back to mind uh, when Jesus healed the 10 lepers and he says only one came back to actually uh, see Jesus and to praise him and to worship him and to, uh, for what he had done and to thank him. The other nine uh, never came back, but Jesus said to all 10, go show yourselves to the priest. Have you ever wondered what it meant to go show yourself to the priest? Well, this chapter kind of explains uh, the regulations or the rules related to when you are healed of leprosy or a skin disease, uh, what happens next in terms of go sh going to show yourself to the priest. Well, first of all, uh, the lepers, as you know, were isolated from the community. Uh, they were outside the camp. Uh, and when one leper or uh, many lepers felt that they were healed, they would call the priest to come and examine them. The priest could not examine them inside the camp, 
camp or the community, but he had to go outside the camp or community to examine them. And the priest felt that they were healed after examining them, because the priest in those days was, in a sense, acting uh, in some ways like a physician in terms of diagnosing the condition or even their prognosis in terms of uh, their condition. In this case, if he diagnosed that they're healed, then he must go through a purification ritual, which uh, fully brings them into a cleansing uh, position in a cleansed status. The first thing that happens on essentially on day one is what's called a two bird cl uh, clean uh, scenario or s ritual. In that scenario, one bird is killed and the other bird lives. Uh, the bird that is killed, uh, the blood of that bird actually is uh, uh, drips into a clay pot which has running water, fresh running water. Uh, also in that clay pot, you, uh, which is uh, dipped ultimately in that fresh running water, is a, uh, a branch of hyssop uh, as well as ce a cedar stick. Uh, and in addition to a scarlet yarn, uh, they are all dipped into that bowl of hyssop, uh, with the hyssop and also with the yarn, uh, as well as the cedar stick. So the blood uh, that's in that bowl, which is now mixed with the water, is then used to actually sprinkle on that healed leper seven times uh, to, for cleansing purposes. And then the actual bird, uh, the live bird that says alive, is dipped into that same water blood mixture along along with the high sip and the scarlet yarn and the cedar stick. The, the bird is then released outside the camp. It's almost symbolic here as the bird is taking the sins of that healed leper away. And the bird that was slain originally is almost symbolically saying this bird was a substitute uh, for that healed leper who escaped death by being healed. So the second feature of uh, that uh, process is once all of that happens, then that, uh, that leper actually can return uh, to the community after he bathes and after he shaves his hair uh, and, and also receives uh, a cleansing. He can return back to uh, the community, but he cannot enter his tent for seven days. Uh, after that, he, he then goes through the procedure of, of shaving his hair, uh, uh, bathing again, uh, in not, on, not just his hair, but he also his, mu uh, his mustache or his beard or his, and his eyebrows, all parts of his hair, kind of like a baby which has no hair, kind of in, as symbolically as a, almost like a rebirth situation. Uh, on that seventh day, uh, seventh day, he can literally return back to the tent. But on the eighth day, which many, many times we consider biblically, we look at the eighth day as a day of new beginnings. He then brings four uh, 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 sacrifices for four mandatory offerings. He brings two male uh, lambs and a ewe lamb uh, to engage in uh, a guilt offering, a sin offering, a grain offering, and a burnt offering. Uh, and these offerings are made unto the Lord. Now the interesting feature of this is that in the guilt offering, some of the blood from the guilt offering, which is really a compensation or a payment for the sin, which that offering seeks to compensate or pay for the sin, uh, some of the blood is actually smeared over the right earlobe and the right thumb and the right big toe and the rest is, is actually sprinkled on the head. That is combined with oil that is also smeared in those same places. Now what is the significance of that? This, uh, on the eighth day, this is done at the tenth of the meeting uh, and it's done before the Lord, and the Lord and it's also done before the people. So not only this person, uh, this healed leper is returning, but he's returning in the public view of the community and, in, and with the, uh, not just the acknowledgement, acknowledgement, but also with the approval of God at the tent of the meeting where all the really important transactional matters uh, took place. But the other thing is this healed leper is being set apart for God. He's being anointed because this is the same ritual procedure that the priests go through when the blood is smeared over the right earlobe and over the th right thumb and the right big toe and then over the head. There, there is an anointing procedure. There is a sanctification procedure that this 
actual healed leper goes through for cleansing. So what, I, what the, the point of this is, is God doesn't just bring us back into community as business as usual, but he expects us to be set apart for him. And that when, we, when our ears are smeared and anointed, it's that we might hear the word of the Lord and, and, and respond to him. And when our right thumb is smeared and anointed, that we might do for him. And when our right toe is anointed, that we might go to the places that he would desire for us to go. And when we are anointed, when the oil of is, uh, is given to us and flows over our head, that we, uh, we might go and we might, th our thoughts might be his thoughts and that our mind might be his mind and our attitude might be the same attitude as Christ Jesus. We were all lepers because of our sin. But when God healed our sin sick soul and brought us back into community, brought us back into his family and brought us back unto himself, he also anointed us. He set us apart that we might serve him all the days of our lives. Are you serving God? with that anointing that he has given you now that you have been brought back into his family and unto himself. If you're not, today is the day to say, Lord, I want to walk worthy of the anointing and the calling that you have given me. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today and we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for bringing us back into community, back into the family, and back into unto yourself, Lord. And we just want to serve you, Lord. We want to walk worthy of the anointing that you have given us as we have been set apart unto you and from the world. Lord, this is my prayer for all those who hear the sound of your voice. It's in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.